Note that as you have been participating in this process, you have not done so without motivation. You may have found some of the patterns that we generated through this process more pleasing than others. You likely found yourself at several points thus far a few steps ahead of me, surmising what would be the proper piece for a given position. There can be no doubt that pattern recognition forms a vital, irreplaceable aspect of the human psyche. And I would, in general, contend that pattern recognition is, in point of fact, one of the primary motivations of human observation. That when we find ourselves in a position where a perception problem presents itself, the seeking of a pattern is one of our prime motivators, that which guides our actions, or a criteria according to which we make selections. Let us consider the same mechanism of representation in a slightly different context. Alexis de Tocqueville was a 19th century French national with a great interest in American politics. Aware of the gradual decline of the French aristocracy, he was keenly interested in investigating other possible arrangements of social power. His work, while certainly of merit in the general category of political philosophy, is also a fine example of the ways in which political philosophy and philosophy of knowledge frequently overlap. That being, in questions of just governance, the political philosopher must ask at some point what one can know and how one goes about knowing. With this in mind, we find that de Tocqueville commented quite succinctly on the problem with which we are concerned. In his model, the ruler is responsible to and responsible for representation of the needs and interests of their constituency, which may or may not overlap with their own. The needs and desires of the constituency are too diverse, too complicated, to consider them in their entirety, certainly not with any degree of true actionability. Because of this, in de Tocqueville's view, rulership in any human government system is contingent on general ideas, rather than a knowledge of the entirety of the data represented by their constituency. A ruler would acquaint themselves with the general sum and in so doing would necessarily discard the exception from consideration. De Tocqueville spoke with great concern regarding that tendency in human understanding. He describes with some concern an event wherein the discarded exceptions would eventually outweigh the accurate representation of the general idea. Where that which the generality discludes or disregards would be greater than that which it takes into consideration. In de Tocqueville's view, and frankly in mine, this was only a matter of time. Where we differ, both in our area of focus and in our conclusion, is the amount of time required for that to occur.
consider the pattern we have represented thus. A tendency. The general idea. That which conforms to it, or that from which it was derived. And the exception. Let us now consider the possibility of multiplicity of property within this representation. We see that the event that de Tocqueville describes has already occurred. The data which has been discarded already exceeds the amount of data which has been considered. Whether or not this data, in point of fact, conforms to our general idea is immaterial. The moment we have discarded it, we cannot know the accuracy with which our general idea reflects the actuality. Further, since we do know the content of the generality, we can observe that our general idea could just as easily go either way. And each would be an equivalently accurate reflection of the totality, and an equally inaccurate one as well. Let us now instead consider the black pieces as representative of events which do coincide with a pattern, and white pieces as exceptions. This model works just fine so long as we are concerned exclusively with viewing our model horizontally. Should we consider the model from a vertical perspective, however, we find that all we have really done is to find a different order of pattern. 